In this section, we talk about confidence intervals and the margin of error and our sample size. So our margin of error is the part that we're adding or subtracting, okay, and basically tells us how wide our interval is. So there's all of these now you try problems that I want you to do so you understand it. But for our final conclusion, let's make sure we know what we're supposed to get. So if you want a higher confidence level, so say you want to go from like 95% to 99%, that will make your interval wider. Because to be more confident, you have to make your interval wider. But if you get a higher sample size, okay, so say you want to go from 10 to 100, your interval will be narrower. And we like narrower confidence intervals because they will be more precise. But we also like high confidence levels which makes our interval wider. So to get our interval as narrow as possible and still get a high confidence level, we like to increase our sample size. A higher sample size gives us more narrow, more precise confidence intervals. So sometimes we'll want to choose our sample size before we actually take our sample. So suppose before we collect our sample, we can choose our sample size to get a desired margin of error. Now, of course, we're assuming that you already know the population standard deviation sigma, so we can use it in our formulas. The margin of error for our confidence interval for a population mean mu was the z star times sigma over square root of n. That was the part we were adding or subtracting every time we found a confidence interval. We can rearrange this equation and solve for our sample size. So n would be z star, our critical point, times sigma over our desired margin of error squared. Now, again, remember, we want small margins of error so we can be more precise. So, we want bigger sample sizes to be, to get small margins of error. But we don't want to spend more money and take a bigger sample than we need. So what we'll do is we'll often say, okay, how small of a margin of error do we need? So we'll say we need to have a certain precision and then we'll figure out, okay, well for this precision that I want, how big of a sample size do I need? And then we'll only sample that much because if we do more than that, we're really just wasting money. So in our next example, suppose we want to survey college students to find the mean credit card debt. And we know that our population standard deviation is 3,500. If we want the margin of error to be less than 150, so let's write down what we're told. Standard deviation equals 3,500. We want our margin of error to be less than 150. We want 95% confidence level. What sample size do we need? So we want to plug everything into our formula, n equals our critical value z star times sigma over m squared. So the only thing I don't know is my z star. So I need 0.95 in the middle and I need to find this z star, which I'll do using the inverse normal function. I've done 95% so often I know that it's just going to be 1.96. So z star equals 1.96. So now let's plug it all in. So n is going to equal 1.96 times our standard deviation of 3,500 over our margin of error of 150 squared. So n is going to give me 2,091.54. Now you can't sample part of a person, so we will always round up because bigger sample sizes are better. So we need at least 2,092 students to get a margin of error of 150. Now if we sample more than that, our margin of error will just get smaller and smaller, which is good. But we do know that if we want this desired margin of error, we need at least 
2,092 students. We probably don't want to go much more than that because then we'll just be wasting time and money.